Shopping Blues, the holiday shopping season, is ready to kick off the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. But with the economy in a slump, will Americans be shopping? A full report from Georgetown's M Street. And keeping the streets safe for pedestrians, police in D.C. are cracking down on jaywalkers and drivers, and they're doing it with tickets. District Wire News starts now. Good afternoon. I'm Justin Fensterman. And I'm Alessandra Torres. If you're planning on going shopping on Black Friday, you might want to go out to D.C., where there's no sales tax for some purchases through December 7th. At the same time, it looks like customers don't have their eye on big ticket items. Emily Jarvis is in Georgetown with the story. Sales, sales, and more sales. In these tough economic times, shops are hoping to lure customers with discounts. And the district is even going as far as to add some incentives of its own. Black Friday is also the start of um, DC shop tax-free holiday. So in addition to our sale, customers can also shop tax-free. All purchases made under $100 will be tax-free for Black Friday through December 7th. But discount shops may be the true winners this season, like Fresh in Georgetown, who have already seen a 40% increase in sales. We've always been cheap and chic, and because of that, we have not really had to suffer. This year, Brown says people are looking to make smaller purchases. You know, a lot of people are tending to direct themselves with accessories more, mm -hmm. um, so then they're utilizing their clothes um, their traditional pieces and then just making their wardrobe more fun and renew it and revamp it um, with accessories. The National Retail Federation is projecting retail sales will only rise about 2% this holiday season, well below the 10-year average. Reporting from Georgetown, Emily Jarvis, District Wire News. The economy is on everyone's mind around this time of year, especially during the current recession. President-elect Barack Obama and other Democrats are developing a new economic stimulus. It is expected to total more than $700 billion over the next two years, which is more than the entire war in Iraq. The plan includes new funding for infrastructure, funds for promoting green technology and alternative energy sources, and targeted tax cuts for working families, students, the elderly, and job, future job-creating businesses. Obama spoke in Chicago today and said the stimulus needs to be big enough to jolt the economy. President-elect Barack Obama is making key cabinet appointments today from his hometown in Chicago. The administration announced the Treasury Secretary is Timothy Geithner. Other appointments include Director of National Economic Council, Commerce Secretary, Health and Human Services Secretary, and Press Secretary. No Secretary of State is appointed yet, but there is speculation that Hillary Clinton is the top pick. The U.S. may be wavering under the pressures of the current economic recession, but the D.C. economy is soaring, mostly due to the upcoming inauguration. Emily Jarvis reports from the Fairmont Hotel in Northwest D.C. In the region, and they'll tell you January is the slowest time of year. But this January, D.C. hotels are bringing in record numbers of visitors. We have 95,000 hotel rooms, and just about every one of those hotel rooms before the inauguration's over will be occupied by visitors from literally around the world. The district is expecting big things from the inaugural weekend. It's hundreds of millions of dollars that will be spent during this amount of time. Uh, it's like a Super Bowl. It's like a World Series. It's like a World Cup. I mean, it, it's at that level. It's uh, an extraordinarily beneficial activity for the region. Some hotel rooms are going one step further to entice visitors to the district. An eco-friendly uh, inaugural package. From the bamboo flooring to the artwork mm -hmm. made from garbage, the eco-friendly hotel room offers a twist to the traditional room. But whether visitors choose the eco-friendly room or not, one thing is for sure. D.C. is hoping that visitors stick around after the inauguration. We're hoping that people come after the inauguration as we go to President's Weekend and we celebrate the Lincoln Bicentennial and we celebrate National Cherry Blossom Festival and on and on and on. And I'm convinced that in the end of the day, what happened last Tuesday night with the election of a new president will continue to have economic value for the nation's capital and for the region for months and months to come. 
Even though the inauguration is more than two months away, D.C. Department of Tourism says that 90% of the hotel rooms have already been sold. Reporting from Northwest Washington, Emily Jarvis, American Observer News. Virginia is loosening its hard stance on immigration. Known for some of the nation's toughest illegal immigration policies, Virginia is now considering proposals to help foreign-born residents assimilate. Some changes are more English classes, shorter Medicaid requirements for qualified immigrants, and state tuition for some immigrants, and developing an immigration assistance office. State officials are shifting their focus from fighting illegal immigration to helping the growing population of foreign-born residents adjust to life here in the U.S. As the winter months approach and snow and ice are present, so is dangerous driving. Hugh Roberts has a story of what D.C. is doing to crack down on these traffic accidents. Driving with care is the theme for November with the 7th Annual Street Smart Campaign. The program's intention is to educate pedestrians and motorists throughout the D.C. metro area with advertisements such as this one, as well as on radio, TV, and public transportation. Olga Lambesis thinks that the program is an important safety measure. Well, I don't know, just from walking in Georgetown and seeing the congestion in the city, if you're not following the traffic signs, then you're crazy. The program does not intend to replace law enforcement, rather escalate their forces. D.C. police are spread throughout more than 30 intersections that are claimed to be high pedestrian crash locations. Although Street Smart's main intention is the education of motorists and pedestrians, some traffic laws are becoming a bit more harsh. The new program also increases fines for motorists who fail for it to yield for pedestrians and crosswalks, increasing the fine from $50 to $250, as well as three points on their license. A pedestrian is killed almost every two hours across the nation, according to the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. In the D.C. metro region, these deaths account for one-fifth of the total traffic fatalities. From Washington, D.C., I'm Hugh Roberts, American Observer News. And coming up next on District Wire, paying for your pets during, a tough, during tough times. How do you take care of your dogs and cats when cash is low? We've got some great ways to save after the break. An American University School of Communication is selling tickets for an event next week at the museum. The event will be moderated by Nick Clooney, father of movie star George Clooney. Stay tuned for details. The slowing economy is affecting everything, including your dogs and cats. Some pet owners are being forced to forgo pet care to pay their own bills. Steve Dorsey has the story. It all adds up. Bills from vets like this one in Tellytown and even food for Fido can shrink your budget. Tyler Case says along with the price of food, he's been hit hard with vet bills. One recent visit to help heal his cat's scratched eye became costly. And he took a, uh, basically a Q-tip and dipped it in alcohol and then dipped that in iodine and then uh, just kind of rubbed it in his eye just to make sure that it would be disinfected and everything. And uh, after that doctor's vi visit, we got a bill for $150. Dr. Ashley Hughes, a vet at Friendship Animal Hospital in Northwest, says people in D.C. will often do whatever they can to take care of their pets. I had a guy today who said, you know, I don't need to go to the doctor. I want to do what I can for my dog. And that's great. You know, obviously he needs to go to the doctor if he's sick, but having people care that much about their animals just makes it so much more enjoyable to work with them and help them. Dr. Hughes says vet care is expensive because it's often out of pocket. The kind of care that goes into a surgical center like this can cost a lot of money. So vets are telling their patients to keep the cost down by thinking smart. So here are some things you can do to cut costs. Feel free to cook healthy for your pets to save money on food for them. Just don't overdo it. Also, look into pet health insurance if you think vet bills have become overwhelming. And most importantly, preventative medicine and care is key before things get out of control. The American University School of Communication is selling tickets for a special panel on movies and how they shape television news. The panel will take place December 8th at the Museum in downtown D.C. American University professor Nick Clooney will moderate the event, and he will be joined by guests Bob Schieffer and SOC alumni. It is part of a program called Real Journalism. Tickets are being sold at the SOC box office for $10 each. 
Elizabeth Drawn, is in charge of handling ticket sales. She says she is surprised at the lack of sales, although she thinks the event will still be well attended of the tickets that they were offering so I think that it has definitely been offered more as an external event but um, we just wanted to give the opportunity for SOC students to go see the um, viewings. Tickets will be on sale to AU students until after they sell out. Professor Clooney's son, movie star George Clooney, will be helping his father host another installment of the Real Journalism series in January. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Alessandra Torres. Don't forget to check us out on the wire, districtwirednews.com. I'm sorry, on the website, districtwirednews.com. I'm Justin Benstermann.